What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. Do you remember this snake? This spotted python from Papua? I don't know how many of you guys are aware, but this is now a new species. This is now Antaresia papuensis. Really, really cool for me because there are virtually none of these in captivity. And I believe that the trio that I have here are probably the only three in captivity anywhere in the world. So I'm going to do a video today. I want to kind of break things down and give you guys kind of a basic rendition of the natural history of these guys, where they come from, and all that sort of thing. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Let's get into this. So approximately 10,000 years ago, Australia and Papua New Guinea were just one landmass. Antaresia occurs in the northern portions of Australia, and obviously there was some remnant population of Antaresia on Papua New Guinea. Now about 8,000 years ago, the seas rose and completely separated by ocean Papua New Guinea from Australia, which is what is now called the Torres Strait. It's about 100 miles of ocean. So 8,000 years apparently was enough time for the animals in Papua New Guinea to evolve significantly different as far as DNA analysis and also in appearance. And it's now recognized as a new species. So the very first live specimen was a female that was collected in 2004 in Wiam in the Papua New Guinea side at an airstrip which is rarely used and that was found by Mark O'Shea. It was documented by Mark O'Shea and it was collected under a corrugated metal piece and that live specimen was given to the Papua New Guinea National Museum and Art Gallery. It eventually died and it became a preserved specimen PNGM25085 which was used in the new paper as declaring it as a new species. So the Wiam Airport is only about five miles from the Indonesian border. For those of you that don't know, the western side of Papua is under Indonesian control. And then there's basically a vertical border, and on the east side it's Papua New Guinea, which is its own country. To the west of that airport is a windy river called the Bensbach. And it doesn't appear, at least from satellite images, it doesn't seem to be very wide or deep. So it doesn't seem to be a wildlife barrier of any sort. But that entire area, it's mostly flat and it's a floodplain. And it's said to be heavily forested and also some swamp land. So the range clearly extends into the Indonesian side as well. But more field work would need to be conducted to better determine the full range. I personally feel that the range is small and concentrated probably to that southernmost portion of Papua that is closest to Cape York. Um, I don't know how far the range may go, but it's just my personal feeling that the range is probably small and it's contained somewhat to that, that low-lying area just right there along the south. So my animals were not used in any of the studies or research as I don't believe any of the people involved in the new paper were even aware that these three animals are in captivity. And it's been stated that these animals have been harvested for the pet trade, but I really have yet to see any evidence of that because as far as I know, like I said, I think these three are the only three that are in captivity beyond the parental stock that produced these animals on the farm in Indonesia. So I've been aware of these animals for well over a decade, but as is usually the case with many of the rare projects that I pursue, I tend to just keep really quiet about stuff so I don't create any kind of demand. So I received these animals on September 14th, 2019, and they were obviously at that time recognized as Antaresia maculosa, spotted python. So my CITES paperwork, the import paperwork, shows them as Antaresia maculosa. However, they're now a new species, Papuensis, and that is not recognized by CITES. So moving them to our breeding facility in Malaysia 
would probably create some bizarre situation where they would be stuck there and unable to leave. Or if I was able to breed them, they would the offspring wouldn't be able to leave Malaysia. So for the time being, they're still here in the U.S. with us. And we're just kind of working on seeing what we can do with them. So I'm keeping them very basic, just in my CB80 boxes. And just keeping them simple on cypress mulch and coconut husk with hide box and water bowl. And just moderate temperatures, just normal uh, temperatures for a tropical python species. I have three. I'll show you the baby. Um, if you, I'll put the video, the original import video, the unboxing video up in the corner for you guys to check it out. But if you don't remember, uh, one of the animals was just a little tiny baby. And she is no longer small. So she is now getting up there in size. She, when she arrived, she was basically a hatchling. And now she is getting up there in size, which is really nice. Almost the same size as the male. But she'll have a little bit more growing to do. So all three animals are thriving. I've been feeding them rodents. The biggest female, when she arrived, she would not eat. She actually went eight months without feeding until finally I moved her to something a lot smaller. Actually, I moved her to one of these size tubs right here. And then that was when she started feeding. So sometimes in captivity, we have to do things that don't really make a lot of sense to us, but uh, that's what worked, and then she's been feeding ever since. So they've been going strong. You can see that the pattern is very different from a spotted python. They actually look like the morph of the spotted python that they call a granite. But there are differences, just basic visual differences. They seem to be a little bit smaller. They're very, very docile. And the pattern, of course, like I mentioned, is, is different. But they just look absolutely amazing. They also have a really, really strong iridescence in the sun. So in, this, in the sun, they just appear to have much stronger iridescence than the Australian ones. Now, I'm not an expert in Antaresia by any means. These are basically the only Antaresia that I have. But the iridescent really pops on these guys. So I was originally interested in trying to undergo the paper myself and starting with the DNA analysis. And I did submit skins, but due to COVID, the analysis of the skin was way far delayed and I had no idea that somebody else was actually working on a paper and because I do not have any sort of biology background, science background, I knew that writing a paper like that was going to be extremely challenging for me. So I was actually kind of relieved when I saw that somebody else had already done it. So there it is you guys, Antaresia papuensis. I know another YouTuber had done a video and discussed it, but unfortunately for that person, they don't have these in their possession, so they were only able to talk about it and not able to show it. So I just wanted to give you guys a nice up close look. So we also have New Guinea water pythons, and I have a feeling that those also might be falling under the exact same circumstances. They were separated from Australia the same amount of time ago. They've been, they've been kind of evolving on their own for the exact same amount of time and see if they also possibly qualify as a new species. I don't know, but I have a trio of those here as well. And I'm just kind of fascinated by that region, as I always say, and all these really oddball animals that occur there. It's pretty cool and I feel super lucky and, and it's very special that I have these animals here in my possession. So we are working with them. I do pair them on a regular basis and we're hoping that someday we can get the job done and get some more of these animals 
in private hands. But so far, haven't had any luck with breeding. But we'll see, we're still working on it. The animals are young, and I don't know. I don't know what the key is to unlock it, but uh, I'm working on it. <laughs> so that is pretty good. Uh, the expo was amazing. For those of you that attended, it was, it was a huge, huge event. Just incredible. We moved a lot of animals. We had a great time. If I look under the weather, Two days after the expo, I actually ended up in the emergency room for a kidney stone issue and I actually had surgery. So I was in the hospital for two nights and I just got discharged yesterday. So I don't feel super awesome right now, but I'm getting better and I have another procedure that I need to have next month. So something that just hit just completely out of the blue and that kind of sucked. So life throws stuff at you sometimes and it, it definitely was not pleasant. That was some of the most severe pain I've ever felt in my entire life. But we got all of our boxes shipped out to all of our customers. There were no delays. If I didn't say anything to anybody, nobody would have even noticed the difference of me being in the hospital admitted. So that is about it, you guys. We will see you guys in the next video. Again, I think you are, it's a pretty safe bet that you will be getting an unboxing video next week. So every Saturday, 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. Take care.